Okay, but here we go. The news. Dun, 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 dun. Top five news. Okay, I haven't read the news by myself in a long time. Oh, my God. I haven't done a show by myself in a long No, 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 that's not right. I did a show a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, here we go. It's kind of weird. I feel, I feel like I'm schizophrenic talking to myself. All by myself. I'm just drinking with tens of thousands of other faders. And, oh, by the way, all you faders out there that are... Uh, Drinking with me right now, hi Kampai. Hi Kampai to each and every one of you. Ho ho ho. Um, I hope you are not driving or on roller skates or a skateboard or operating any heavy machinery, and that includes machine guns. No machine guns while listening to Got Fated Japan and drinking. <laughs> but that'd be kind of cool if you did. <laughs> and if you do do that, definitely wear a Got Fated Japan t shirt, and you can get that on our. Uh, power? Can you get that red tube? No, red bubble. Red bubble. Don't go to red tube. Don't look for us there. <laughs> Tom's there. I'm not there. Okay, here we go. First story. <clears throat> no more rambling. Mm. Mm. Ah, time for another drink. Here we go. Ah, yeah. We're gonna do the news. We're gonna do it right. Okay, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, so let me just make this a little bit bigger. God, I'm so embarrassed. Rambling all by myself. This is the real Johnny, by the way. When it's just me, <laughs> I'm completely natural. Here we go. 85-year-old man arrested for stealing condoms from convenience store. <clears throat> my God. At what point does it stop becoming embarrassing to buy condoms. I mean, you would think that an 85-year-old man wouldn't be embarrassed. You th you'd think he'd be proud. He's like, yo, dude, I'm 85 years old. I can get I can get a hard on naturally, and I am buying these. But no, not this guy. This guy's ashamed. He's he's embarrassed, so he's stealing condoms. That or maybe he's a clown that's down on his luck. <laughs> he's like, I got a kid's show and I got no balloons. What the hell was I was I was supposed to do for God's sake? <laughs> <coughs> oh, I heard my voice. Okay, here we go. Police in Gifu City have arrested an 85-year-old man in suspicion of shoplifting two packs of condoms from a convenience store. According to police, the incident occurred at around 11 a.m. Sunday, Chu Kyo TV reported. Uh, police said Ko Sasaki of No Fix Address and who claims to be self-employed, quote-unquote, took two packs of condoms worth about 2,000 yen and tried to leave the store without paying them, a.k.a. shoplifting. The store manager, a woman in her 50s, saw Sasaki pocket the condoms and detained him at the store entrance while another employee called police. Oh, my God, dude, he's 80 years old with a hard on. Just let him, just give him the condoms. Oh, my God. And why are condoms fucking 2,000 yen? Jesus Christ. I I think, uh, I think an abortion is like Ichiman Gosenyun or something. I don't know. That, condoms should not be that expensive. I, I think condoms should be free, to be honest. Uh, there's got to be a place for 85. No, he wasn't 80 years old. He was 85 years old stealing condoms. Definitely let him go. If I was the cop, if I was the cop that went there and I'm like, yo, dude, you're you're 85 years old, you're self-employed, and uh, you're stealing condoms. He's like, it's 11 a.m. I've got a hot date. I got no cash. I needed it. I would pay for the condoms. I'm like, sir, you know what? Here's the 2,000 yen. Go to the front. Pay for them. Say you're sorry. And uh, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh all right next story number four number four boom 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 man arrested for oh wait oh yeah, yeah different story man arrested for placing james bond spy camera in women's toilet in fukuoka cafes holy smokes a spy camera i think all cameras these days are spy cameras each and every camera out there is a spy camera. If you look at your phone, your phone, it has a spy camera. Let's be honest. Anytime a camera is smaller than your fist, it's a spy camera. So let's just call it, let's call a spade a spade. The, basically, the guy had a camera. Spy camera. Anyway. Oh, this is yummy too. 
Okay, moving forward. Police in Fukuoka have arrested a 38-year-old man in suspicion of voyeurism in disturbing the public's peace after he public peace after he placed a spy camera in the women's toilet cubicle in several cafes. According to police, Yuya Ebisawa, who works for a music company, hmm, has admitted to placing the cameras in a toilet in several cafes in Chu Award between November 11th and March 4th. Wait, November, December, January, February, March. Five months! That's five months of mayhem. Kyoto News reported. An employee at one cafe spotted the camera and noticed notified police who stalked out the cafe until Abisawa came to retrieve it. I would love that job. Basically, you're like hiding. No, actually, I would hate that job. No, stakeouts are no stakeouts are bad if they're in toilets. But stakeouts are kind of cool. If you're like a cop and you're doing a stakeout, you're like hanging out, eating nachos, you know, listening to some like Joe Rogan or something. You've got binoculars, you know. It's a pretty easy job, you know. There's no real stress. But if you're doing that in the bathroom, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> now, police and Ebisawa has admitted. No, police said Ebisawa has admitted to the charge and quoted him as saying he placed the camera in the toilets to quote satisfy his sexual urges. Ew, gross. He also told police he sold video footage of the camera footage online to make extra money. Oh my God, you know, all right, this guy's working in the music business and I know the music business right now is completely messed up, especially because of AI, but holy smokes, dude, you got to find another way to make money. This is not the way to do it. Oh my God. Mm. Oh my God. When it says music business, was this guy a musician? Was he like a banjo player or something? <laughs> music business, or maybe was he like a street performer or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> That's crazy. But he was doing this for five fucking months before somebody fucking found that 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 camera. Dude, how disturbing is that, dude? You're you're in the bathroom, you're you're dropping a deuce, you're there, you know, maybe maybe you're listening to some Joe Rogan, and then all of a sudden you look up and there's like this big camera like this, like <laughs> looking right at you, and you're like, Oh no. Oh my god. Oh, that is so messed up. Oh man. I don't know why people do that. I, I don't know why people like that. You know, uh, bathrooms, There's for me, there's nothing sexual in the bathrooms. Bathrooms are gross, nasty. I, I don't understand why people like that. I don't know. That, to each their own, but Jesus Christ, that's, that's pretty bad. Okay. Wait a second. If you worked in the music business, you should have just said he's an audio engineer and he was recording audio for a CD or an album or something or some kind of audio research. I don't know. Maybe for a podcast. If you said that, maybe get off with a slap on the wrist. Uh, probably not, though. Let's be honest. Okay. Story number three. Here we go. Cha-cha-cha. Men arrested for threatening schoolgirl with a knife. Oh, dude, man. That's bad. Don't threaten schoolgirls with a knife. Mm. In fact, don't threaten anybody with anything. Here we go. This story took place in Yokohama. Oh, I love Yokohama. For all you theaters out there, Yokohama is a great place, especially um, Minato Mirai, a beautiful shopping area. They got a lot of little cafes and restaurants where you can go there and you can check out the bay and stuff. You can see all the boats in the bay. It's really cool. Yokohama is great. Yokohama's got a great vibe. Oh, and also, Yokohama has an amazing reggae festival. If you're coming to Japan and you like reggae, come during or right before the reggae festival. Go to the reggae festival. It's incredible. There's like 50,000 people that go there. And um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Mm. Here we go. <clears throat> Police in Yokohama have arrested a 30-year-old man in suspicion of threatening a teenage girl with a knife and attempted to rob her in February. Okay, this guy's a complete moron. An absolute moron because kids in Japan do not have money. They have no money. Yokohama is a suburb of Tokyo, right? And I'm not saying it's poor or anything, but I, it's more suburban. And I guarantee kids there do not have money. So for this guy to try to rob this girl, this little kid, I don't know, how old is she? A teenage kid, maybe 12, 13 years old. This guy is out of his mind, dude. This guy's crazy. Kids do not have money. I never had money when I was a kid. 
Holy smokes. Dude, I grew up in Michigan. You, you know how I got money in Michigan? I had to fucking find cans. Because in Michigan, you take a... You take a can, you take it to a party store, and they give you 10 cents. And and actually, there were, there were times where I was almost out of gas in my car when I was 16, and I was fucking going through fucking, like, garbage cans, looking for cans, garbage cans, looking for cans. Yeah, I was going through garbage cans, looking for cans, because I needed to fucking pay for gas, you know? And that's just something that we do in Michigan. <laughs> it's the, the good and the bad of living in Michigan, I guess. But anyway, kids don't have money. That's my point. I digress. I'm digressing all over the place. I'm Bill Burring. This episode is cool and I'm drinking. I can ramble all I want. Mm. And if you're drinking, you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Mm-hmm. Continuing on. According to police, the incident occurred as the girl was walking home from high school on the night of February 20th in Midori Ward, Kyoto News reported. Police said Shinichi Ogasawara, a dispatch worker who lives in Abina, Kanagawa Prefecture, approached the girl from behind and threatened her with a knife and demanded she hand over all her money and items of value that she had. She's got like a math book, maybe, maybe some pencils, an eraser. I'm sure she's got an iPhone, but she's a kid, so it's probably like an old iPhone, a cheap iPhone. Maybe it's even used or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, dude, you got to be desperate. Dude, all right, crackheads in Detroit don't even do this. They don't even do They're like, what? Kids? Fuck that shit. No way. <laughs> this guy's insane. Okay, uh, moving forward, the girl resisted and Oga Sawarara fled empty-handed. The girl was not hurt. Dude! I'm picturing the high school girl from Kill Bill totally fucking this dude up. What was her name? Gogo Yubati? Was that her name in Kill Bill? But anyway, yeah, I'm imagining it's that girl and she's walking home. Do 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 do. She's got her like little like I don't know high school bag or whatnot. I don't know what kids have. I don't have kids. And anyway, this guy's like, hey, and he pulls out like a Rambo knife and he's like, give me all your money and anything you have of value, like your shoes or something. And she's like, fuck that shit. And she takes her purse and she throws it out towards this guy and her purse like fucking it extends and it actually actually has a chain that's connected to it, like a chain wallet, and goes like that, and it bops that guy right in the face. The guy flies back 15 feet. Whoa! Smash! He crashes into a 7-Eleven. She runs up, jumps in the air, and she fucking kicks him, pow, right square in the balls, dude. He's got one ball going west and the other ball a ball going east, dude. And this guy goes down for the count. Like an old school 1990s video game, dude. This guy's out. And then she runs up, kicks him in the face. And then she runs away. Then she goes to the cops. Well, maybe that happened. Hopefully, in, in in my in my imagination, that's exactly what happened. She is the girl from Kill Bill, and she killed the fuck out of this bill. Okay, moving forward. Police said Oga Sawarara, who was arrested on Thursday, is admitted to the charge. He surfaced as a suspect after an examination of street surveillance camera footage showed him in the area of the time of the incident. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the thing in Japan. We got cameras all we got we have spy cameras all over the place. Every single in this neighborhood, every single intersection has one or two spy cameras. They're like the little ones, like the right by the, the lights or whatever. It's got the little black cover thing, whatever. There's one there, this one there, this one down there, and they just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, everything's covered in Tokyo. I didn't know it was like that in Yokohama. I know if you go to the suburbs, some of the cities don't have the cameras everywhere, but in Tokyo, especially downtown Tokyo, man, we've got so many motherfucking cam- spy cam- James Bond spy cameras that, uh, yeah, you-, you commit any crime and you're going down. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, police said they are also questioning Oga Sawawawa uh, about a number of incidents in the same area of this year in which a man committed lewd acts in front of young women walking along streets at the night. Dude, the cops, they got this guy. He's a fucking piece of shit. They're going to throw the book at this guy. They're going to be like, ah, uh, we think you did everything, and quite possibly, you Jack the Ripper. <laughs> this guy's going downtown. I swear to God, he's, he's busted. Oh, man. Mm. 
Mm. My goodness. Oh, wow. This is good. I'm drinking a highball right now. This is a Takara. A Takara highball. Dude, I should definitely have these guys as a sponsorship. I do. I, I use. I drink these all the time. Takara highballs, absolutely delicious, and they're affordable. Also, seven percent. Ching. All right. Mmm. I highly recommend these. It's like a buck fifty. They're cheaper than a forty in the states. Oh my god, it tastes way better too. <sighs> Next story. High school student arrested for ex. Dorting money from woman by threatening to release video of her naked. Oh, shit. Man, when I was in high school, I washed dishes. <laughs> Kids these days. <coughs> oh, my God. This is incredible. I mean, this is bad, but I mean... <laughs> Let me read that again. Maybe I misread it. High school student arrested for extorting money from woman by threatening to release video of her naked. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm, all right, here we go. <clears throat> what happens here? Mm. Such a good drink. All right. Please in Kasuga, Fukuoka. Ooh, Fukuoka. What's going on with you these days, Fukuoka? Come on. <clears throat> Please in Kasuga, Fukuoka Prefecture, have arrested a male high school student on suspicion of extorting extortion after he obtained... 50,000 yen, a.k.a. about almost $600 at this point, from a woman he met on social networking site by threatening to post a video of her naked. Oh, my God. This kid's pretty boss. Oh, my God. I would never have the balls to do something like this when I was a kid. In fact, I mean, just, when I was like, what, in high school, it's pretty hard for me to, to see a girl naked. I mean, <laughs> we had nudie magazines. <laughs> that, that was it. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it took me a while to get to like second base. <laughs> I was such a nerd. Okay, here we go. Moving forward. Police said the 18-year-old that well, uh, Police said the 18-year-old who lived in Asiya, Hyogo Prefecture became acquainted with the teenage wo Ooh. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to backpedal on everything that I just said. Uh teenage woman. Okay. No, it said woman. Teenage woman, uh, I think. All right, all right, faders. All right, let, let's get something straight. These articles are first written in Japanese, and then they're translated by God, who knows what, into English, and they're always written kind of crummy, right? And uh, yeah, uh, it should. All right, let me re. Let me let me edit the title. High school student arrested for extorting money from teenager. It should it should have said teenager by threatening to release video of her naked, not woman. When when I hear the word woman, I'm thinking of somebody that's like in her forties or something. I'm thinking like a mom or a milf in this or somebody somebody that's older. I was not thinking of a kid. Oh god. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Kids these days, the the, the bullshit they gotta deal with, the stress that they have. Oh my god. I would hate to grow up right now. Oh my god. I mean. Pretty much, I'm a man child. Let's, let's let's be honest. But I mean, I would hate to be a child right now. Oh my god. Okay, uh, one more time, just so we're all on the same page. <clears throat> I'm gonna read the whole thing from the beginning. Now that we know what's going on for for sure. Hold on. Get a drink. <clears throat> Police in Kasugawa, Fukuoka Prefecture, have arrested a male high school student on suspicion of extorting extortion after he obtained fifty thousand yen from a woman whom he met on a social networking site by threatening to post a video of her naked online. By woman, it should have said child or a student or a kid or a teenager. Police said the 18-year-old boy who lives in Asahiyuko Prefecture became acquainted with the teenage woman, teenage girl, let's be honest, about three years ago on a social media website. Hmm, man, this kid's a piece of shit. What a fucking asshole. And uh, social media sites, I mean, God, all right, all right. In Japan, all the kids here use either TikTok or Twitter. So it's either A or B. Who knows which one? I don't know. Not pointing the finger, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of one or the other. Um, <clears throat> around November last year, the woman served... No, uh, I can't read. I'm too much booze. Around November last year, the woman severed contact with the teenage 
with the teen, which reportedly drove him into a frenzy in December. He demanded the woman apologize naked while on her hands and knees on a video sharing app. Wait a second. So she broke up with him. It drove him crazy. Then he demanded that she apologize to him naked on her hands and knees on a video sharing app. Video sharing app. I'm assuming it's TikTok. Let's be honest. Dude, that is fucked up. Why does she do that? Dude, what the fuck? Um, after she compl- complied with his request, he threatened to publicly release the video unless she paid him 50,000 yen. The woman transferred 50,000 yen to the suspect and then consulted with the police in Kasugi in January. Police said the suspect, who was arrested on Monday, has remained silent. What the fuck? Why would she do that? Holy shit. When you sever ties from somebody, you block them. You, you have no contact with them whatsoever. You, and, then, and then if they want you to apologize, you say, fuck you. I'm not going to apologize for that shit. You're a dick. In fact, you're a maniac. You're a psychotic sociopath maniac. And then, and then you, you fucking you tell your parents everything. You're like, yo, mom, dad, I got to tell you some shit. I met this dude online, and I know you told me never to meet dudes online, but I met a dude online, and uh, yeah, he's really scary, and I blocked him, but I just need to tell you just so somebody knows, just in case of like anything happens. Like if he finds me and he wants me to get naked and apologize on Twitter <laughs> or TikTok or whatnot. Oh my God. Ladies, listen, never do anything like this. Never, never. All right. Ladies, ladies, I'm, at this point, you got to say ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen out there listening to Got Fit Japan, whatever you do, don't show yourself naked. In fact, showing yourself in a bathing suit is still kind of not a good idea. It's kind of acceptable, but I wouldn't do it. And uh, yeah, don't never, ever, ever. Go online and do anything sexual. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Even if the, if with your boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other or whatever and stuff, do not do it. Stay away from that. If, I mean, in the privacy of your own home, if everybody's of age and consenting, that's one thing. But don't do fucking anything online. Holy shit. The internet is for real. And absolutely never, never, ever, whatever you do, don't let anybody ever talk to you talk you into being on a podcast for God's sake. Jeez Louise, podcasts are the worst. <laughs> the crazy shit we say. Holy smokes. But yeah, stay away from the internet uh, if you got your clothes off. Okay. Uh, or yeah, stay away from these uh, James Bond spy cameras that we have too. Yeah, those those are very dangerous. Okay, story number five. Here we go. Top five with Johnny. Mm. Wow, that's a good drink. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Here we go. Japan to enforce crypto anti-money laundering steps from June. <clears throat> Japan to enforce an- no, Japan to enforce crypto anti-money laundering steps from June. Who the fuck uses cryptocurrency anymore? Cryptocurrency was big in like 2018. We had uh, two mega investors on Got Fit of Japan back in the day. They called them the uh, crypto what did they call them? They called them the Bitcoin Cowboys. Yeah, we had the Bitcoin Cowboys on Got Paid in Japan. Remember that? Remember that episode? One of them had to leave Japan because of taxes with uh, cryptocurrency. He made so much money. He's like, I can't live in this country. Yeah, if you live in Japan and you have cryptocurrency and you transfer that money into, you transfer Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of that into actual Japanese money, you pay 50% in taxes. There's no point. <laughs> Nobody uses Bitcoin in Japan. That's, that's interesting. I mean, way back in the day when Bitcoin came out, there was all sorts of like hype for Bitcoin. There's like taxis that some taxis kind of had a quasi Bitcoin service. Uh, there's a Bitcoin bar and so on. A lot of people were collecting Bitcoin and stuff. But now it's just like nobody says that. Like, I mean, if I was like, Faders, give us Bitcoin, sponsor the show. I mean, dude, how many of you guys would actually do it? Probably nobody. Anyway, so uh, yeah, uh, whoever is making this law, you're kind of uh, five years too late. <laughs> but anyway, let's see what this story is all about. Uh, Japan's cabinet decided Tuesday to enforce stricter anti-money laundering measures from June 1st to trace cryptocurrency asset transactions, bringing its legal framework in line with global standards from... 10 years ago. Okay, uh, Japan revised relevant laws in December after its anti money laundering stops are doing mm. insufficient by the 
Financial Action Task Force, an international standard-setting financial watchdog. Um, oversight organizations have been strengthening their monitor monitoring of crypto assets that can be used to launder money, uh, an activity in which money obtained from illegal activities is made to look legitimate by processing it through legal transactions. Probably buying, what, what, NFTs or something? Or I don't know. I don't know how that works. A key feature of the new framework is the enforcement of the so-called travel rule, travel rule to better keep track of criminal proceeds. The rule requires a financial institution processing of crypto asset transfer to pass on to customer information to the next in institution. Um, and the information should include the names and addresses of the sender or recipient, blah, 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 the end. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to read the rest of the story because that's that's just way too long. So basically, if you have crypto and you give it to somebody else, you got to give them your email address, your home address, your phone number, your maybe a tax ID and vice versa or something like that in Japan. Or maybe if you buy something using cryptocurrency, if you buy an NFT or if you buy a house or something. I don't know how all that shit works or whatever. I don't know who's accepting it. I don't know who's using it. And cryptocurrency these days is fucking so risky. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I barely know stocks. I'm pretty much like what? If, if a company's good in a stock, uh, the stock goes up. If the company's bad, stock goes down. I get it. I get it. It makes sense. Good economy, stocks go up. Bad economy, stocks go down. Cryptocurrency no matter what, it's going to go up or down, and it doesn't even matter why. It basically, it could be Tuesday. Tuesday, fucking shit. Bitcoin's worth a billion, trillion, zillion dollars. The next day, fucking nothing. Who knows why, you know? I don't know why. I'm not smart enough. But anyway, that's all good. And that's the top five stories of this episode. Faders, wow. Thank you so much for uh, fading with me and listening to all these stories and watching us on a on YouTube, and I think there's one guy watching us on YouTube Live. What's up? Oh, hope you're getting faded with me. You better be, unless you're driving. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't drink and drive. Mm. This has been fun. This is a stress reliever. Holy shit. I think I lost weight doing this. Who? Who? Faders, thank you very much for tuning into this very special episode of Got Faded Japan. I am your host, Johnny. Uh, Tom is MIA. We don't know where he is. He's gone. He's somewhere. Uh, uh, he's, uh, hopefully, he's okay. <laughs> he doesn't answer his phone. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy is sick. He's sleeping. He's in bed, uh, but he's good too. Went to the doctors. He's fine. Don't worry about it. And uh, yeah, let's see. How can you support the show? Uh, you can go to YouTube if you're not watching us on YouTube now. And uh, yeah, subscribe. Tell a friend to subscribe. We're trying to get a million billion subscriptions. We used to be so big on YouTube, but we kind of dropped the ball. We figured everybody is going to listen to podcasts on, well, a podcast platform. We had no idea that YouTube was going to take over the world. And uh, yeah, hey, we fucked up. Hey, what can you do? So, but anyway, yeah, help us out, hook us up, and subscribe to us on YouTube. That'd be great. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, give us a little emoji kind of thing if you want to. You don't have to, like, say anything in the, the chats or whatever. I mean, if you if you do, yeah, that's cool. I'll read it. Uh, yeah. And uh, also, we're on Patreon. Give us some money. Give us some money! <laughs> <laughs> just joking. I mean, kind of. Yeah. Give us some money. That'd be great. Supports, uh, support the show. Uh, we buy booze with the money. And um, actually, if we got a lot of money, what would we do with that money? If we, let's just say somebody, let's just say like a uh, hundred people uh, gave us like five bucks each, each or something like that. And we wind up with like fucking like 500 bucks or something. Dude, I think we'd have to have a show somewhere. We'd have to like take like a couple of days off, go somewhere crazy in Japan and do something fucking awesome and record the whole thing and make a whole podcast out of it. That would be cool. Or we just spend it all on booze. We just spend, we buy $500 of booze and we'd have the most epic fucking wasted podcast ever i don't know we do something wild but uh yes uh if you want to support us by giving us cash uh patrons the way to do that uh also it's the the show is sponsored by the spilt ink which is my website um if you look behind me i've got my paintings da -da 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 -da. yes uh, these paintings are also for sale on my uh, uh the spilt ink website and uh, yeah, I do commissions. That's awesome too. And of course, we're on, let's see, we're on, uh, let's see, uh, Facebook. 
We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on TikTok. We're pretty much all over SNS. So just like just Google Got Fitted Japan, and you're gonna find us all over the place. And uh, that's how you can support us. Also tell a friend. And uh, yeah, jeez, I think that's about it. What else could I talk about? It's kind of hard to do this show without any notes. I do. I completely free flow this shit. I fucking have no. The only thing that I had planned was the booze. And then to mention Code Blue Cam. That was it. I was like, dude, Code Blue Cam. I got to tell that story. That was fucking awesome. And seriously, man, that's fucking crazy. You know, if you're watching this show right now on YouTube, stop. Stop. Whatever you're doing, hit stop and go to Code Blue Cam and just watch some epic fucking shit. Go to like most recommended videos if you can. There's like fucking a dude that's like out of his fucking mind. He's going like fucking 200 miles an hour in a fucking BMW on the opposite side of a freeway and these cops are chasing them. They're like, this guy's gonna kill us. He's gonna kill us. This is crazy. And and dude, it's pretty exciting to see watch these videos. And also another thing that's kind of interesting, sometimes you can kind of catch the cops listening to music, you know, in their squad car. And a lot of the times it's gangster rap, dude. Cops are listening to fucking gangster rap as they're fucking like right before they start chasing somebody. They gotta be like, yeah, someone too. We got a four four five and seven seven six. Yeah, yeah. He's going on I ninety five going north. Yep, we're in Wisconsin. Yep, pretty much guaranteed. He's got no teeth. Yep, yep. That's about right. You know, seriously, man, it's it's exciting. So I mean, if you can, not if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can. Everybody's got YouTube. Go check out Code Blue Cam and subscribe to them. We have no connections to them, but I really, really hope that somebody in Japan actually comes up with Blue Code Blue Cam Japan. That would be so sweet, dude. I would pay to fucking watch that. If that was on some kind of like a, a cable channel where you had to pay to watch fucking cops in Japan bus tourists in Shibuya and fucking Kabuki show. Dude, take my motherfucking money. Holy smokes, dude. I would stay home every weekend and watch that. Bye-bye, AI. You're unnecessary. I just want to watch this shit. <laughs> it's going to be great. Oh, man. Well, on that note, faders, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been great hanging out with you and getting faded. Uh, Yeah. See you the next time. Peace. Whoa. <laughs> Look at all this. Hey, what's up? I'm Johnny, a.k.a. The Spill Tink, the one and only, and uh, today I'm going to make a popsick painting. I'm really excited to do this. I've got all my paints here. It takes about this much paint to make a popsick painting. And uh, I've got my two other most important ingredients. Very strong hot coffee. Oh, actually, that's not that hot, but still, it's strong coffee. <laughs> and I've got punk rock music. With these two things, nothing could go wrong. All right, with that said, let's rock. <laughs>